Listen, I know it's impolite to say I told you so, but uh, I told you so. See, here is a reminder of the importance of finding out what legislation can do before actually making it law. See, I, I found an article from Fox 4 Southwest Florida, which shows us several examples of so-called red flag laws being abused, and not only against adults, but against children as well. And we'll discuss that next on the Constitution Study. There's one thing you have to know wherever you make your stay. Came from a long through line of everyday Americans. Hello there, everyday Americans. Paul Engel here with the Constitution Study, where we read and we study the Constitution and we teach the rising generation to be free. I'm glad you could join me today. Please head over to the website, constitutionstudy.com. You can ask questions. You can find out where I'm speaking. You can invite me to come speak at one of your events. I just had a, a meeting at uh, Young Americans for Liberty uh, a couple weeks ago. We had a great time. Invite me out to talk to your group. I'll even let you pick the topic. You can sign up for the mailing list. Not only see what's going on, I send out a monthly update, but get these messages delivered directly to your inbox. Messages like the one I'm going to talk about today that deals with Florida's red flag law. As I said, I came across a, a, a web page talking about an article from Fox 4, and I found the opening paragraph of this particular article very enlightening. Quote, <clears throat> Florida's new red flag law, created to protect the public from future mass shooters, has temporarily stripped gun rights from more than 2,500 people across the state, including at least 100 kids, an I-Team review found. Now, the focus of the article is a number of times children are being targeted by Florida's new red flag law. However, I see a massive abuse of rights, and not just gun rights. Now, this should be a surprise to no one, as, as I've enumerated the many rights these laws infringe on in my articles, red flag laws, another federal attempt to bribe states to enact red flag laws, and Brandon Man Masson and the effect of red flag laws. I'll put links to all those in the description below. But let's take a look at some of the infringements that Floridians are dealing with that kind of go beyond what I've already covered. Let's start with freedom of speech. Now, the article lists three examples of risk protection orders, or RPOs, being issued based on apparently solely on a person's speech. A 91-year-old man who claimed he wanted to even the score with his late wife's alleged lover. A former U.S. Marine turned teacher who admitted he told students during a lockdown drill how he could be the best school shooter. And an eight-year-old in Polk County who got mad at school and then threatened to get a gun and shoot everybody up. Now, before you jump up and claim a First Amendment violation, remember, that amendment starts with the words, Congress shall make no law. Congress did not make this law. The Florida legislature did. However, Article 1, Section 4 of the Constitution of the State of Florida states, Every person may speak, write, and publish sentiments on all subjects, but shall be responsible for the abuse of that right. No law shall be passed to restrain or abridge the liberty of speech or of the press. Now, since it appears people are having their liberties and property taken away based solely or even primarily on their speech, this is a clear violation of Florida's Constitution. Now, should these instances have led to an investigation? Probably. But it appears that the mere accusation was enough to issue these so-called risk protection orders. Now, while I have documented the violation of our rights against unreasonable search and seizure in previous articles, the news from Fox 4 brought an interesting twist to light. See, in Polk County, 20% of RPOs issued between March 2018 and October 2019 were issued to children. When asked why his department had filed so many RPOs against kids, Sheriff Judge said, First is to put the parents on notice that you got to do a really good job at securing your firearms so your children can't get to it. And number two, it's putting the parents on notice about your kids got an issue here. W wait, wait a second. I, I thought red flag laws were meant to stop mass shootings, not putting parents on notice. I, I thought the sheriff swore an oath to uphold the law not teach parents how to raise their children. Does this mean that the best and proper way of putting the parents on notice is to have a legal order of protection issued against the child? 
an order that could follow them for the rest of their lives, that may impact their ability to get into college or find a job in the field they desire. Or let me ask Sheriff Polk, would he hire someone whose record showed they had an RPO issued against them? Somehow I doubt that. Even so, the sheriff still wants to permanently punish children just so he can, quote, put the parents on notice. Sheriff Judd also said, you and I both know that 99.9% .9 of them are kids making stupid kid-like statements. But can you tell me which one means it? So Sheriff Judd admits that 99.9% .9 of the children he is filing RPOs against are innocent. But that's okay. Because one-tenth of 1% 1 are actually guilty. Whatever happened to Bladstone's admonition, it is better that 10 guilty persons escape than one innocent suffer. Sheriff Judd would rather 999 innocent children suffer so that one might not go free. Do you really want to live in a world where you are punished even though the government cannot prove you are a danger to yourself or others? Now, if that idea doesn't make your head hurt, I fear for this country. See, if you live in Polk County, Florida, do you want your law enforcement to restrain first and ask questions later, if ever? See, if not, why do you have this man in office? He's a sheriff. He is elected by the people. He has violated his oath of office to support the U.S. and Florida constitutions. That should be more than sufficient grounds to find someone better, someone who will actually protect your rights, not abuse the system just to teach the parents a lesson. So yes, forgive me, but I told you so. I told you that these red flag laws would be abused and that innocent people would have their property taken and their lives ruined by others with an agenda. I even expected fearful people overreacting to just about any out of context statement they might hear. What I did not expect was an agent of the government to take this opportunity to destroy the lives of children just to get their parents' attention. I also never thought that the state of Florida would actually become a police state where law enforcement would use any excuse to take children to court just to get their parents' attention. Or a state where an elective sheriff would be allowed to destroy the lives of 1,000 families because he believes one of the children may be dangerous. And let me ask you, what are you doing to stop this tyranny? To stop it in your state and in your country? If the answer is complaining on the internet, then the truth is you're effectively doing nothing at all. We should all be in front of our legislatures, the men and women we hire to act as our agents to work in our name and demand they follow their oaths to support the constitution of their state and of their nation. If they will not, then it's our duty to fire them and to find someone who will. If you do not, you may one day find yourself standing before a court because someone didn't like what you said or because they want to put someone on notice. What will you do then? As I said, if this doesn't frighten you, if this doesn't anger you, I fear for our country. This unbelievable abuse of rights by the sheriff, by the courts, by the state legislature, and we all sit back and go, oh, but we're afraid. You know, we'll put a thousand people in jail. We'll put a thousand people under a restraining order because one of them might be dangerous. What happens when you're one of those 999? What happens when someone misunderstands or misinterprets a side comment you make? That, you know, you get mad and you swear and so oh, and suddenly your property is gone. Your rights are gone. Your liberty is gone. What happens when some sheriff or other elected official decides, you know what, I think it's time to teach this person a, letter, a lesson, so I am going to issue an order against their children, or against their spouse, or against their parents. Or what happens when? We're seeing it happen in Florida. Do you really want to live in such a Gestapo state? And no, I am not using that word lightly. This is not simply about people informing. This is Stalinist Russia on steroids. 
This is not people informing. This is the government taking a law and using it just to teach people a lesson. Not because they've done anything wrong, not because they've broken a law, just to teach people a lesson. And this should anger you. And if it doesn't, well, I don't know why you hang out here. Because this is the trampling of our most precious and cherished rights, and people just don't seem to care. Oh, it's another news article. Oh, what are we going to do? Well, it's about time we start getting in some legislators' faces. We, about time we start deciding that if a government is destructive of our rights, what are we going to do? Are we going to alter it? Are we going to abolish it? Or are we going to submit to it? Because those are our choices. It's a choice that we need to decide. And it's a choice we need to make for ourselves. Now, we can't change the whole country. But if we don't start changing our areas, our representatives, if we don't start doing something, this is only going to get worse. So yeah, I told you so. The question is, will you listen to me this time? Can you hear me now? If you can, share this message, post your comments, give us other examples, give us other situations where the government is using these laws to abuse the rights of their citizens, and let's get people involved, let's, let's get people's attention, share this message, comment, ask questions on the, the website, on Facebook, Facebook, on YouTube, wherever you find me, let's get engaged. Let's stop being sheep. Let's start being citizens. Let's stop being serfs. Let's stand up for our rights. Let's pre be prepared to defend and assert them. And if you want to learn more and you want a little help figuring that out, well, come back here the next time. We'll discuss that on the Constitution Day. Came from